Hey folks, welcome back to the cabin. I see we have just a tiny little window of sunlight coming through, but today, this weekend, it's forecasted to rain all weekend. So um, I kind of wondered what kind of video can I share with you this weekend? And the first thing that came to my mind is, if you remember about uh, maybe three, four weeks ago, I put in um, my solar setup and I solar powered the whole cabin. And I just want to do a follow up on that and let you know what I'm all able to power with um, my solar setup that I have. And I think you're going to be surprised at everything that I've been using. Like I said, I've only did that video about a month ago, but in this last month I have given it an intense workout. And we've had all different types of weather. I've had a lot of sunny weather and I've had days like today where it's nothing but clouds and rain and um, it's really given my battery bank a test. I was kind of unsure how much power I could draw from the battery bank that I have, uh, but I'm happy to tell you, I've had a really pleasant surprise, and I look forward to sharing this information with you, so stay tuned on Carl's Off The Grid. I'll show you what we got for solar and how much we're working off of it. I'm gonna keep this real short and basic, but you can see I went ahead and bought two Harbor Freight solar panel kits which is a total of eight solar panels. And they're really good about charging whether I have sunlight or not. And this is what I have on top of the garage. For those of you that may be new to the channel, um, I'm gonna quick go over the basics as to what we have. It's, um, here's my charge controller. It comes with the Harbor Freight Kit. The Harbor Freight Kit uh, comes with the charge controller, all the wiring for your panels and four basic panels. And then it also comes with um, two LED lights, which are coincidentally the lights that I use here in the garage. And the LED lights work really good. They're really bright, um, but I don't know that I would use them for the rest of the, uh, of the home. So anyways, uh, then I also have um, a 2000 watt inverter. This is the Juniper inverter. Um, this thing, I bought just because the price was right. Once I start running my sophisticated electronics like a, a TV or a stereo system or anything like that um, off of my regular um, AC wiring or your the regular outlets like you would have in a normal home, I'll be switching this over to a pure sine wave inverter. Um, I bought this one just because it basically was cheap and I was working with a budget and it helped me through the construction process. I have a Renergy a battery um, that I picked up from the internet. This battery here is, uh, I think it's roughly around $300. I forget the exact price. Uh, ultimately, I'll probably end up getting multiple of these batteries, but for right now, I'm using just this one. Okay, so within the, the cabin, um, I have both my lofts are powered, and then I have four of these lights right there up on the top of the cabin, which you can see it's cloudy outside and we have no shortage of light in here. And then I also have um, two more lights within the main floor uh, bedroom. As many of you may or may not know, um, the most expensive appliance to run at an off-grid cabin is gonna be your refrigerator. Uh, we do have a couple different options that we can use to get refri refrigerated food. Uh, there's the old traditional way of uh, digging a hole in the ground and, and keeping it cool by the earth and maybe packing some ice in there in the winter months and insulating the heck out of it. I'm not going to get into that, but some of the more modern ways are um, you could go ahead and get a propane refrigerator or you could get a regular refrigerator that's going to run off your battery bank. And we have got um, a cooler that we are using that I'm excited to show you. Uh, we call it our refrigerator. It uh, has been running at the cabin all week long. It has minimal draw on our battery bank. And I have gone throughout the whole internet and studied a whole bunch of different refrigerators. And there's not too many that use um, a low amount of power. But what I ended up resolving to is, I'm not gonna push this brand, but this is a, a, a cooler that you can plug into my, um, like a cigarette lighter in your car. It's a travel cooler. 
So basically how the cooler works is it has a cord that has an end on it like this that plugs in your cigarette lighter of your car. You can see I've been running this now for three days of pure rain and and uh, pretty much cloudy skies. We had no sunlight at all and the solar panel still received enough power to keep us up at a good amount of voltage. And this is what we've been using. And surprisingly, when I get here, I go ahead and plug it in right away. And I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but you can see how frosty that is. Uh, our drinks and our food stay ice cold. So if you're looking for an idea as to what type of refrigerator can I use in an off-grid cabin, uh, specifically in a tiny cabin, that's not gonna cost a whole bunch of money. This is the way I would recommend going. Um, I've also looked into propane, which if we end up moving up here full time, that's what I'll end up converting to is I'll probably have propane for the refrigerator and then I'll run those same lines over to my cook stove and things of that nature. Um, but I just wanted to do a quick segment on this and, and show you what we're using in um, show you the new addition to the cabin, the refrigerator. Uh, we've had this thing for a number of years. It's probably a little old and outdated, but it tends to work great. And uh, on last week's video, I was talking with, a little bit with uh, Jason from Homesteading Northern Michigan, and he was talking about pretty soon he's going to be cutting the line of power to his house and converting all the way over to solar as well. And, uh, and it kind of reminded me that, hey, you know, I should probably do a little bit of an update and show you what's going on and since it's raining outside uh, and it just did start raining, I don't know if you can hear it on the roof or not, but um, I'm not gonna be going outside too much. Uh, I'm hoping that this pushes through and if it pushes through, I'm gonna be meeting my friend Don up here and we're gonna go out on an adventure. There's a, a lake that's out in the middle of nowhere and um, uh, we're gonna go out there and maybe try to do a little bit of fishing. But, uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me this week on Carl's Off the Grid. Appreciate your continued support. I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers and thank my continued subscribers. Uh, you guys are awesome. Without your viewing, you know, hours and things like that, it wouldn't be possible for the channel to, to be possible. So thank you again. Appreciate it. We'll catch you next time on Carl's Off the Grid.